Hi, I'm Peter Haddock, and I'm here today with Nick O'Donnell, Assistant Director for Traffic and Engineering at Wandsworth and Richmond Council. Nick, we're standing in the yard here, and uh, your yard is full of equipment, and also you as a team work with contractors to deliver some of the projects in the borough. And uh, one of the things you've excelled in doing is actually creating a big safety culture within not just your own organisation, but within the tender processes and encouraging your contractors to look out into the marketplace and find solutions. And that's why we're here today, folks, because Nick, um, you've got some great news where you're now working with one of those big contractors and they're improving safety, aren't they, by looking at the, using the safety shield system, which is rolling out across their fleet of equipment at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. We, uh, we identified about 10, 12 years ago the need to improve safety particularly with various types of equipment and collisions and accidents happening both on site and off site um, and we set out a specification which has moved improved over the years and moved forward um, and then more recently we had a tender for our highways contract where we set a specification for equipment uh, we took it to our main uh, bidders and asked them to meet that specification um, it's all around improving safety um, improving transparency on site um, improving working conditions and also from, from a council perspective it's about making savings yep. you know when we can avoid accidents or we can avoid claims and we can avoid incidents happening it's all timed down it's all claims against the council and it's about improving a, a, a confidence amongst the workforce and that's worked really well for us we went out to the market we gave them specification we didn't say use safety shield we just said here's specification work to that go out and find people who can meet that um, our preferred uh, term contractor in the end came back with um, how they thought they would do it. They obviously had a conversation with uh, Safety Shield and that's what they took forward. And we're really happy in terms of how it's worked. Um, they've now fitted out to all um, equipment working in both boroughs in Richmond and Wandsworth. And, and touch wood, we've had no accidents or incidents. And that's the, the whole reason for this, isn't it? And why is this important, folks, is because, you know, we're a construction industry that has to do things uh, and has to do them as quickly as possible, as productive, as efficient as possible, whilst obviously making sure everyone goes home safe uh, every day. And the, the element to that is about learning, isn't it? And it's Absolutely. about behaviours and it's also about evidence that you talked about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how is that... Uh, safety shield system actually helped you with those elements and, and helped you, you know, and the contractor you know, have a better sort of working relationship, not just together, but with the general public and the taxpayers. Well, one of the things I really like and one of the things that's really important to me is if someone writes in and says, um, you're contracting and he ran me over and they say it happened on Thursday at two o'clock on X road, we can go, great, no problem, let's take that away. We'll go back, look at all the information. We've got video footage. We have all the information from the telematics about speed, driver behavior, and we can say, actually, driver John Smith was driving at 18 miles per hour. We reviewed the footage. There is no such incident. Or, yes, actually, we were concerned about it. We will speak to the driver. We will do driver training. We've got the ammunition now to control, in a good way, the behavior and meeting the expectations of our residents and businesses. And that's really important. And it's behavioral change that's what safety is all about, folks. Because, you know, we've, we've long had the toolbox talk. We've long had the PowerPoint presentations and things like that. But with the Safety Shield videos, where you can see things that are happening around and on, on site, you actually see the actual person, individual or situation. And therefore, it's real, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and it's vital because it gives the confidence to those using the system when they can look up in in the the camera or the equipment that's there understand how it works and then realize this is not just for my benefit it's for all users in the vicinity and that makes a heck of a difference in terms of site safety yeah and also i guess folks you know what's really important is we can learn from these incidents as well so you know a, a part of that training process allows us to do that mm -hmm. and you know nick you've actually been one of those people that's really pushed hard for this sort of technology and you've had those experiences already and what would you say to people in your position across the country as to the benefits and 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 the changes that you've been able to make in a positive way Sure. Well, the start of the journey for me started from incidents um, to do with vehicles and um, collisions with cyclists. Right. And that's where my passion was, because you know, as a cyclist, as someone who's seen a lot of near misses, I was concerned about the lack of technology and the lack of ability to do with what is quite a common problem, particularly in London, when you're in huge areas yeah. of very compact road space. 
Um, and so my starter point was very much around, well, what are the benefits that can be gained out of that? Obviously, there are safety benefits, but improving driver behavior, we found that vehicles could make fuel savings to companies, yep. improve driver behavior, and therefore perceptions on, of, of the company. Um, issues in terms of claims and incidents of, of, of accidents. Unfortunately, we get false claims from people saying X happens. You know, we could deal with those. So th there's been a much broader series of improvements and, and, uh, and benefits gained by us as a local authority beyond just the desired safety ones to those users. And it's interesting that Nick says that because what we're talking about nowadays is ultra low emission zones in London. We're talking about you know pollution control and things like that. And when you you change driver behaviours, you actually change emissions as well. And so that is really important. And it's got so important to you that actually you have gone out there and said, hey, how can we measure? the traffic in the area, how can we measure the types of equipment that are using our roads and our infrastructure, and how can you actually measure the pollution? And I saw something on a lamppost down the road, Nick. Um, you've installed a whole new system, again, from Safety Shield, the, the EcoSense the solution, haven't you? And why has that come about? Because it's, it's a different thing altogether, isn't it? So part of our work and, and part of what I do is very much data driven. It's about providing the evidence to support any claim or any direction you want to take. Um, we wanted to, to have a solution that looked at all types of movement. So traffic, cycling, walking, yeah. and then beyond that, air quality has become a really important issue for very good reasons, particularly in London. We thought if we could have a system or a unit that captures all of that in one moment, in one go, and can be continuous all the way through, it gives us a massive source of information that we can work towards, that we can base on, that we can benchmark, and clearly meet the standards on it. And, and it's really, really been fantastic. And the time we put it in, we've got some invaluable data now that we can start talking about pre and post ULES in London. And we can start talking about, well, what was the impact of that scheme or that scheme or how are things changed with Hammersmith uh, Bridge uh, changes going on, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that has allowed us to be much more intelligent about how we plan the future network for London. Yeah, and I think that's really important because as you look at the way in which roads are being worked on, the way in which road closures work, you can actually see the different flows and changes there as well around uh, the area. But what's really exciting about the product itself for me is that it's tapping into existing infrastructure. So this is on top of a light, um, a street light, and, and actually it's using the power from that street light. So you haven't had to go and put up new poles, create new infrastructure, dig up the pathway to yeah. do that have you and that's, no, great. You know, that's really important because it, it means two things one you can enable that system to happen but also you can move it around when Absolutely. you're doing things can't yeah. you? it's a simple commando socket um, relatively cheap relatively simple to install uh, and what I would say as well the other important context particularly in the case of London but nationwide really is the world has really changed in the last two or three years yeah the, the, the travel patterns of people the behavior of people working at home we're in a new era now and we're not so sure where the movements are happening, what's changed, where the new baseline is. So having this data and having this 24-7 data is invaluable now to understand the new setting post-COVID, dare I say it, yep. as to where we are. Because people aren't making the same amounts of trips, the same nature of trips, and we need to understand that. And also, when you look at the scenario you've got there with cycle lanes and things like that, you know, when you've got changes, you can encourage different behaviours because one, people have got the confidence it's going to be safer. Two, You've got the data that says, actually, if you're cycling in these areas, it's it's no no longer as polluted as you thought it might be because of some of the changes. Mm. And, and that gives confidence for people to be more carbon friendly and to change their own habits, doesn't it? Absolutely. And also, it helps us to build the case for supporting certain schemes. Yep. So, for example, we've used uh, the, the, the Safety Shield system to look at monitoring cycling down one of our, our key roads. Yep. The fact that we had the data and we could demonstrate that since the scheme went in, cycling has gone up 550% on this road. Wow. We'd never been able to do it without this system because yeah. otherwise someone stands there for a week, does the counting, <laughs> and that's one week in however many, yeah. and you could have a bad week, you could have weather that's inclement, yeah. and there you are. Yeah. But this has given us a complete set that says, you know what, it's consistent and we know where we are. Yeah. And that gives us the case now, which, which we're doing, to apply for more funding and keep building more of these active travel schemes. And that's fantastic news for everybody, I think, Nick. And, and it's great to see that data is, is a proof point. And so, you know, the data, the cameras you get from the Safety Shield systems on equipment 
in the sky, as it were, on the lampposts, uh, is really coming together as part of a whole data-led transition for the council here. And there's a lot other people can learn from this, Nick. And uh, it's fascinating that AI technology um, for both plant and equipment, and now lampposts, yeah. um, is, is coming into <laughs> its own now. And the data is, is easily accessible, as you told me earlier. And, you know, fundamentally it pops up when there's incidents and that you can act straight away, can't you? And that's Absolutely. important, isn't it? Yeah, the, the ability to react to the same. We can, we can pick up on stuff with, with confidence now. So where there were you know, claims of incidents before, we never had the date, never had the camera, never had the information. We were second guessing and trying to piece together what happened out there. Uh, whereas we have live footage, you know, we have the ability to call back and look at data now that gives us a far clearer picture. And also, as you say, learn from that, plan from it, and more importantly, avoid incidents happening, which is the most important thing. Yep, so it's about keeping everybody safe, looking after the environment, folks, changing travel behaviours, changing driving behaviours. Nick's got a lot on his plate, but well done, Nick, for pushing all of this forward. It really is a testament to the hard work and to the attitude that you've created within this the council to say, this is what we need to do. Be proactive, use technology for the better taxpayer, saving money, saving the planet. It's great to meet you. Great to hear this story. Cheers. Thanks, Olivia. Cheers now.